Hi, I'm Britt. And my name is Alyssa. And this is Skeletales. Tales. And this is the podcast where we strive to answer the age-old question of, is my dead grandma watching me? Alyssa, there's no time for a dead grandma this week. <laughs> okay. Because I have a very special announcement. As you know, this is our 99th episode, and next week will be our 100th episode episode. Wow. So on October 1st, we will be recording our 100th episode, you and me in person via a live Zoom for the whole world to see. Um, I mean, obviously, you know all of this, but I'm telling the listeners out there. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to be at the Hotel Andra, a supposedly haunted spot that we plan to maybe even investigate a little bit while we're there. Anybody is welcome to join this Zoom party. Um, we're going to start recording at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Central time for those folks out there. I didn't research other time zones, but you can do that. Um, <laughs> it's 9 p.m. Eastern time. Are there other time zones? Wait, send Mountain. So 6 East, 7 Central, 8 Mountain, 9 Pacific. Oh my god. No, not 9 Pacific, 6 oh, Pacific. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, let's try again. 9 on the East Coast, 8 Central. 7 no, eight Mountain. Mountain. <laughs> oh my god. 6 p.m. Pacific time. There you go. I think we nailed it. Kind mostly. Wait, All does right. Mountain come be between before Central? Yeah, it's 1 hour earlier. Okay. There than Central. So oh we my got God! Wow. Nine p.m. Eastern time. <laughs> uh, 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 Eight p.m. Mountain time. Yes. Seven p.m. Oh, Central time. No. Six p.m. Eight p.m. It's two hours. Oh God, damn it! It's eight p.m. Central. So, so I think Central comes before Mountain. I think mountain. I was wrong. I think you're right. You know what, people? Just do your <laughs> homework. Don't listen to Alyssa. <laughs> we now need a map of the time zones. I think I was saying it right, and then you corrected me. I know. Me. I think you did. 9 p.m. if you are in, in the mountains. East Coast. No. Nope. Oh, I mean. <laughs> 9 p.m. East Coast, 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Mountain, and 6 p.m. Pacific time. And everybody's Can we make it any more clear? Off. Can we okay. make it clearer? <laughs> Honestly, guys, we're spelling it out for you. If you want the Zoom link, if you want the Zoom link to join us, you can head over to uh, Skeletales on Facebook. We have an event page there, or you can email us directly at skeletalespodcast.com and we'll send you the link. And then when it gets a little closer, we'll post it up on Twitter and Instagram for you to see there. So lots of places to get that Zoom. And uh, yeah, October 1st. Heck yeah. Be there, be square. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it yet, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> You, you will at least a have maybe. to conjure a spirit to, to talk with me that night. Also, we're going to be giving away um, swag at the at the event. Heck yeah! So, t shirt, um, t shirt, buttons, keychains, all sorts of fun stuff. So, if you're there on the Zoom call, be ready to like take some gifts home. Well, I mean, I'm going to mail them to you. So, yeah. be ready in three to five days. So, to yeah, giveaways, your gifts. stories. Yes. So much fun. You know what, though? Grandma's going to be pissed. Why? Because you're just like, no time for grandma this week. <laughs> you know, know. she is going to come at us hard. Oh, my God. I can't be cursed again. <laughs> Alyssa, do we just talk about parties and numbers of, F as, boop, numbers of episodes <laughs> that we've done? No, Brett. We also like to talk about time zones. <laughs> um, that's about it. No, we That's tell it. true tales. <laughs> we tell true tales of the strange, unusual, and paranormal. That's right. Um, I've got a, I've got a couple of juicy stories for you today. What about you? You got some? I got a couple stories. I have a very local one. Um, oh. Speaking of Pacific time zone, I this one actually has a bit of a coincidence. Can I just get into it? Because oh, I just got excited. Do. Okay. Yes, I'm ready. So, um, so uh, Mitch and I are having to set up an LLC and we've been like brainstorming names 
it, we just have to pull the trigger. So this weekend we were talking about it. We're like, let's just do like woodland properties or woodland creature. Like we like that sort of thing. Something with the woods, woodland. So this weekend in our neighborhood, it was the 60th anniversary of our neighborhood. They had a whole display up in this Central Park area and up at the, the clubhouse and the history of the neighborhood. And so the whole community was founded by this fella named uh, something loveless. And what is the name of the company that founded our neighborhood? No other than Woodland Properties, LLC. Whoa. I was like, what? Mitch, it's a sign. He was not as excited about it as I was. So anyway, there's just a little w- rinky dink of a, of a coincidence. I'm like, that's it. We got to go with that. So part of this display, though, included a very interesting tale of mystery, mayhem, and extraterrestrial. And it was part of this. Where you live? In our neighborhood. Yes. And so this article was from the Seattle Times. You know what? I meant to look up a date for this, but I don't know when it happened. The Rod Rod Loveless was the name of that guy. What a neat fucking 60s name, 70s name. Rod (laughs) Loveless with Woodland Properties. I would say this happened in the early to mid 60s. Okay. Okay. And it says, flying saucers real or just a false show? More and more people are beginning to believe in flying saucers or UFOs as they are officially called. The last two months has brought many reports of sightings of these objects near Issaquah. Last month, Mr. and Mrs. H.C. Brady were watching television about 830 in the evening with the draperies still open. Suddenly, a bright red flash went by their window about the size of a tetherball. At first, Mrs. Brady thought their roof must be on fire because of the brightness of the light, and such a vivid red. By the time the couple could get to the window, it was gone. The object seemed to them to be far away. The same evening, the Oscar Andersons were home, and a bright red light settled in their yard. Mr. Anderson spotted it first and called to his wife. To them, it was about three or four feet wide and just sat there and glowed the brilliant red color like a fire. Then, as quick as it had come, it was gone. Mrs. Anderson said it was hard to describe. It was the funniest thing ever seen. I think she meant to say I'd ever seen. The funniest thing I'd ever seen. Oh, they probably talk in old-timey voices. It was the That's f- what I was gonna- Shit. Okay, well, we'll pick it <laughs> yeah, up now. Try this get- next part is going to be okay. in the- Okay, old-time. The funniest okay. thing I'd ever seen. But I can't do her voice. Mrs. Anderson's <laughs> a tough nut to crack. Um, in last week's Seattle Times, Mrs. Burton Ross of Tiger Mountain described her experience with flying saucers with the same red glow. Five other witnesses with Mrs. Ross also saw the mysterious objects. Last Sunday evening, Bruce Tolley saw an odd white light over the Tiger Mountain area that streaked north and had a tail with a red glow. The same night, Mrs. Malan Set walked through her darkened house and toward Tiger Mountain. She saw an odd brilliant light that disappeared suddenly. There doesn't seem to be any explanation for these sightings, and they all seem to be described in the same way. If any of you readers have seen one of these flying saucers, please let me know so others may share your experience. Love the Seattle Times. It's signed the Seattle <laughs> Times. I think maybe it just... Love. <laughs> Heck so. Okay. And so then um, this next bit is from Rod Loveless. Everyone in the 60s was named Rod Loveless. I think they should have been if they weren't. Do you, that must be his real name. Like, that's just a great name. I'm a little <laughs> obsessed. He sounds like a porn star, actually. I don't know. I was right? too. <laughs> it's a great porn name is what so I meant to good. say. So good. Okay. So good. There, there is a long history of swingers in the hood as well. If you have a oh, white rock. Hey, I you know why you moved up there. Pew, chicka, pew. <laughs> we just haven't gotten around to painting the rocks we put up front white, but... If you're out there, called there oh, must... that's the symbol you paint. You a, paint the rocks white. Yeah, a white rock in front of your yard, or apparently a white gnome is now the new thing. Ooh, supposedly. I'm gonna have to look around the neighborhood now, see if there's any white rocks. Yeah, boom, chicka, boom, boom. and then like you could start by going by Rhonda Loveless. 
Oh, that's right. Um, my um, my uncle's last name is Loveless. So my aunt and uncle, their last name is Loveless. So I mean, it's kind of in the family already. So uh, it is. Uh-huh. Are you wearing like a velvet, uh, like a mustard velvet jumpsuit over there, Britt? You kind of got the vibes <laughs> going today, too. That's right. That's right. Sure. Okay, you'd make a lot of Gold new friends chains. in that neighborhood. That's right. All right, so people who lived up in Division 2 in a house with a view over the valley looking west saw this UFO over by a county garbage dump off Issaquah Hobart heading west. There was an electrical transmission line that went across. They'd seen this flying saucer on this one evening, and it was reported in the paper. We were so interested, we brought our kids and sat on Tiger Mountain Road high on the hill, where we got a good view looking out in the same direction. We'd been sitting in the car for a while when my son brought... Brian says, will the real UFO please stand up? <laughs> Wait, for that, real? Yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> we know where Slim Shady got I, it from what now. The f- I didn't know. <laughs> We're calling it in. Eminem, explain yourself. <laughs> Um, then they discovered it was some kind of reflection off power lines. So it wasn't a UFO. There was a reason. Something with the transmission lines that went across. Love Rod Loveless, developer of Miramont. <laughs> He's protecting his investment. I can see right through you, Mr. Loveless. You're like, we can't have the reputation of UFOs flying above our new neighborhood. It's going to ruin us. Uh, have you seen anything uh, unusual I, out there in the woods of your town? Yes, once. Okay, okay, a couple things. One, there is a fucking giant flame you can see if you go up high enough, like a huge, I think it's an incinerator flame from the county dump that ah. you can take a real, real lovely hike and get a great view of the dump from uh, <laughs> our side of the mountain here. Um, so there is that huge giant ball of flame that you can see, and it, but I wouldn't mistake that for a UFO or anything. Um, okay. I don't know back in the olden days of the 60s if you might, but probably not. I have seen in my friend's backyard, looking straight up in the middle of the night, a light that was like, I would have thought it was a drone, if, but it was super high up and it moved kind of like a drone, but it was like just a white light that was up there and moving around like it was looking at us, essentially. But it was so high up and it was in the middle of the night. Like, I don't... I don't and know. Why don't, why don't you think it's a drone? Oh, it could Well, it was just a white light because the drones have to have like, um, I want to say they have to have different color lights on them. It was just like a single white oh. ball of light that was way up, almost like a star kind of, but closer, but it was moving back and forth. It was not acting. Ooh, so that's the most unusual thing I saw, but not anything like I wasn't terrified. And we had a couple beverages. So we're like, look at that thing. Like I was not the only one who saw it. But um, and I was like, it's a UFO. And everyone thought I was joking. But I was like, I think it's a UFO for real, guys. But I just <laughs> let them think I was laughing it off. Um, But then it reminds me of the story that Lori wrote in a few weeks ago, who That's lives in right. my neighborhood about a little ball of light or something that came into her house, right? Uh huh. And then her son That's talked right. about a UFO. He landing. did see he did see the blue angels out in the front yard. Yeah, or a UFO. I'm now convinced it was a UFO landing in his front yard and his father We was don't an alien. have details of what he thought it actually was. We've That's solved true. this. We've it's established. Fact. Tony is an alien. Get out. Remember that? Who's Tony? Oh, that's is that her husband? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you need to start investigating. It's- because if people are laughing off things in the sky, unknown things in the sky. It's there, all connected. It's all connected. Next door. Hop on next door. <laughs> That's a great idea. I'm going to. I'm going to write that down. Oh, next door will be a flurry. Hey, Britt, do you have a story for us today? I do. We're going, uh, we're traveling over to the central time zone again. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you remember several months ago, I told you a story on our uh, Shadow People episode? about a fella in my neighborhood named Ken, who his whole family had seen a cowboy figure was this the wearing one that was a hat, wearing a coat. Yes. Okay. And yeah. The I neighbors really... had seen okay, the okay. hat figure looking in their window. Yes yes, yes. yes. Okay. Well, he emailed me and he, he says, I'm confused. Why did you put 
our cowboy in the shadow person episode because he is not a shadow. And so he went in to describe his, we'll call him the cowboy ghost a little bit, a little better. So he said that they're able to discern details of his appearance completely. Like he looks like a person Oh. The facial features, everything, but ghostly, like transparent. Okay. And so not shadowy at all. And so it's a bit of a crypt of corrections for me. So Crack cowboy ghost, open. not a shadow person, ghosty okay. person. Okay. Um, and they said they don't get any negative feelings from their ghost cowboy, and they want to keep the relationship with him pleasant. He, um, he said that his youngest daughter was the one who had seen the ghost cowboy the most and that he was most active when she lived in the home. She since moved out and gotten married, and so they don't see Cowboy Ghost quite as much. But his oldest daughter um, had a instance where she worked with a girl in a bookstore who grew up about six blocks from their house. And the co-worker had said that in their home, they also had a ghost. But Ken, Ken writes, he says, their ghost was an older woman in clothes of the same time period as our ghost, and they would see her sitting on the foot of their daughter's bed. They think that she is looking out for her and protecting her. Um, so just six blocks away, they have a same time period ghost haunting this other house. And he had researched in the area and the neighborhood that they're living in used to be an old ranch. And Ken wonders that if the two of them, the lady ghost and his cowboy ghost, possibly knew each other or lived together on the ranch. I have this idea of them where they're a couple and they're in the afterlife and they're roaming their used to be ranch looking for each other, but here they are in different homes, separated by six blocks, not knowing that the other is just a short distance away. Oh, Isn't that wild, though? Like Separated go, for I eternity. Know, they gotta find each other. That is interesting. Forlorn lovers searching for eternity, trying to find each other and be or reunited. Or, you know, who knows? Maybe they were on different you know, time frames for the ranch. But it is it is interesting though that both houses close together, both haunted, both, you know, of it's the same time period. Yeah. Interesting. Um Ken did say one last thing in the email and he said, Last night I was watching TV and the remote that was on the table, which was two feet in front of me, suddenly moved seven inches to the left. I'd never saw, seen that before, and I spent about 15 minutes picking it up and putting it down, <laughs> trying to make it happen again. I tried it again and again many times this morning, and it won't move. I like to picture that there's some ghost on the other side who's been sitting there trying with all his might to like uh-huh. telekinesis that shit across, and he's like fuck yeah like they're it. like cheering or the cowboy and the like the <laughs> chick like they're like we did it or maybe they just hate what he's watching they're like god damn it i was really trying to change oh, the yeah. channel ken what were you watching it was like turn yeah. it off and they tried they're like oh i tr- wanted to turn that off and all i did was move it i appreciate the clarification correct yes us. we don't open yes. up that crypt of corrections nearly as much as we should <laughs> Also, I, you know, we love a good ghost story. So to get a little bit more insight on the cowboy ghost, I really, I really enjoyed that. And then did we just kind of get confused? Because from the outside, like when I was picturing someone seeing it from the outside, I was picturing like a silhouette or something. So they just saw a figure, not necessarily like all the details. Maybe that's where I got confused and thought it was a shadow person. I think that in my head, I wanted it to be hat man. Oh, you just really shoving him in that box. You can't. But rain- Hat Man doesn't usually look through windows. He usually likes to stand in the doorway and stare at you. Yeah, and just creep around. And he's not a cowboy. He's like, God, that nah. happens all the time. I fucking hate it. <laughs> but it's always me getting con- getting confused. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Are what you- else you got for me? Okay, so my next story, I was trying real hard to find something about why was I trying to find time travel? I don't know, just because I want it to be real and I want stories. There are not nearly enough stories written in by time travelers. I'll tell you that. I can't. <laughs> or people, it's true. People meeting their future selves. 
like I found one story about a guy's like, I got onto this bus and this man was getting off and he looked at me and he said, don't go to the party tomorrow. And then he scurried <gasps> off and I'm all weirded out now. I didn't go to the party tomorrow, but I did have a birthday party like, but nothing <sighs> happened. And then um, someone was like, you probably would have met the woman who like ruined your life for the next 20 years at that party. That was really not flushed out. But also it tell. could be a good old rogue psychic uh, reading there. The fellow on the bus could have been uh, a psychic and been like, ooh, I'm sensing some bad things happening at this party and rogue, rogue reading. My dream. My dream come true. He did say that the guy kind of like reminded himself of him. But yeah, no, I think you're onto it. I bet you're right. I think it was a rogue psychic greeting. Someone just had a flash of disaster. It's like, don't yeah. do it. Don't do it. Um, yeah. I mean, the odds of him having a birthday party to go to, not great, not terrible, but right. You know, like if I, mean, I had a party one planned a and then someone was yeah. like, came up to me on the street and was like, don't go to the party tomorrow. I'd be like... Okay, I don't think I'm going to go to that party. That seems freaky it will not and take weird me enough. much. Yeah, it will not take much to convince me to not go to a party. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> I like calling in with that excuse. Why can't you come? Well, you know, this old lady at the bus stop. She told me it wasn't a great idea. She seemed to be <laughs> me from the future, go. coming to warn me about something that's going to happen tomorrow. I want to write that on RSVP. Actually, there is a party I can't go to. Oh, where it's like, gonna... um, yes, I will attend, check, or no, I, you know, won't go. Or the third option, which is, you know, my future self told me I shouldn't go. Yes, that's from now on. <laughs> we should add that to all invitations. I mean, it's a possibility. So anyway, yeah. this is not a story about that. This one is a true story. And it says, I have now replayed this experience about a thousand times in my head, and it just doesn't make sense. One day, I needed to go into town to buy something for my grandma's birthday. She was turning 74 the next day. I was also doing a little bit of food shopping, too. I had been in about three shops already, and I had to make my way up a hill to go to another when I stopped in my tracks because there was a man. But not just any man. This guy was dressed differently, like he had just come straight from the 1800s. And even creepier, he was just standing there, staring at me. No one else seemed to notice that he looked out of place. They just walked straight past him, almost as if he was invisible. All of a sudden, I had this uncontrollable urge to walk back the way I came, back down the hill. I continued to shop in different stores, trying my best to avoid the hill. I finally managed to find a gift for my grandma and then headed home. I got home and a couple of hours passed and I forgot about the encounter until the next day. Wednesday had arrived and I got ready to see my grandma on her birthday and deliver the gift. I got there along with my other family members. 30 minutes passed and we were looking at old pictures in a family picture book that my grandma had. I was searching through and stumbled on a picture of that same man I had seen in town. Same clothes, same face, same everything. It was him. So I asked my grandma who he was, and she said he was my great-great-grandfather who had died of a heart attack in 1887 in that very same town on his way to work. When I heard this, it sent shivers down my spine. I... I told no one except for my brother because I'm really close with him. When I told him his eyes went big and bold. He said he had seen the exact same man in the exact same place also staring at him. We what? never mentioned it to each other again after that. What? Oh, I love it. I love it. They need to be talking to other members of the family. Who else has seen grandpappy? Great great grandpappy <gasps> just stare like he seems to want something a little bit right just staring at them in town like and he died on his way like so there see he's the, i feel like there's unsettled business or something that's the vibe yeah. i get no yeah died suddenly in town on that spot and he's just like is he asking for help if he's just staring and he the the um writer had the feeling of not wanting to go up 
towards the man though. So it, it couldn't True. have been like a good feeling. Ooh, so interesting. Maybe something bad was going to happen though. And he appeared to keep them from going there like a car Ooh. or something. You never know, right? Sort it's, of like a guardian in a way. Yeah. Protecting. But I think that the storyteller wanted it to be a time traveler. They're like, I saw a time traveler. And it's like, <gasps> nope, just your dead great grandpappy. If it was somebody in very futuristic clothing, like I, growing up as a kid, all the future people wore like a lot of metallic, <laughs> metallic jumpsuits. Um, then maybe now that it's now that it's the future, <laughs> that's why all it would take. Bring, let's bring it a <laughs> metallic jumpsuit that would make them stand out. Some weird looking shades, maybe. So, yeah. Some fancy shades and a metallic jumpsuit, and you're like convinced time traveler. From Holy time shit! Time future. <laughs> You'll never guess what I saw today. Um, doesn't take a lot. I am still searching for a real time traveler story. I even if, yeah, I love those. I think they're fun. Do I believe that they actually happen? I, this one's pretty, you know, believable. But as far as like real time travel encounters with future selves and stuff, I just think they're entertaining. Oh, the one you told um, several months back about um, the fella who got the job at the warehouse with his future self. That one will go in the memory books. I'm never forgetting. It's so good. So good. Yes. So I want more of those. That's what I'm always hoping for. And like, I've not been able to replicate that. I mean, this, this rogue warning from a future self potentially warning them of don't go to the party. You'll change your life. Like, yes. and then just, I got sucked in to some of these time travel forums. It's a whole thing. And just the questions that people ask, like, what moment in time would you go back and change? And how would you change it? And what do you think your life would be now, like, now if you change that? And just a lot of um, what, thought. What problems. about you? If you, if you were given the ability to hop forward or backward in time, so forward to your um, older self or backward to your younger self, would you? Yeah, sure. Fuck yeah, I'd do that. What, would you? Oh, I don't know. I, I feel like I'd fuck with the timeline. I and think then I'd like grow an extra eyeball or okay, something. Okay, as an um as a, a an observer, let's do it like the Scrooge like uh, Scrooge rules. Oh, okay, okay. okay you okay. can't actually interact with that time. You just go okay. as an observer and look. Like this would be the first scenario. So okay. you could would you go peek on your at your future if you could? Because then when you come back into your per your present time, you do have choice you and could will make some changes. and you could make some changes <gasps> yes i do 100 percent. i want to know yeah okay i would do what that. about you for sure you would your future uh, self uh-huh uh-huh definitely i would go check, check it out who knows this 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 podcast could be taking us down a real bad road Brett. No, or a we, really good road we could end Calm down in financial ruin um <laughs> on well, fire that's, that's a possibility in jail <laughs> This podcast skeletons. If, if if I knew that, if my if that's what my future self you know showed me, fuck, I'd be shutting uh, this computer down up right now. Okay, go the other way. <laughs> okay, go the other. Lots and lots of listeners, lots of stories, financial success, books. Put that intention out there. Little Brit mini figs all over. Mini figs, <laughs> books. Yes, um, we've got this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that would be good. That would also <laughs> be good to see. These are our podcast goals. A I don't book know. And many <laughs> a, like we have a real dream and big here. I don't know. We obviously, we've not thought much on this. I just pictured a little Brit action figure. And that's uh, as far I as I went. I would love to get to the point where our inbox is just filled to the brim with ghost stories, and we're just like, "Ooh, which one are we going to pick today?" I like that. That's a real good goal, and we should manifest that. I one thousand percent know that my future self would probably be like, "Don't worry so much about." everything oh i mean I, that's what i want to go back and tell my 20 year old self yeah to be like get all this energy you're putting towards worry forget about it exactly so if you're 20 out there listen to us old coots it's wasted energy wasted energy just enjoy the moment exactly so mm -hmm. um but yeah and then going back i mean ugh. 
going back and changing the past. I wouldn't mind slipping myself one of them uh, little booky books from uh, Back to the Future, like a little gambling book, like, oh, here's the World yes, Series results for like, the next yeah, 50 like years. Here, slip the piece of paper, like investment. These are the oh, ones yeah. invest here. <laughs> yeah, you will hear about this thing called Bitcoin. Uh, back, I'm not Bitcoin. telling my son. Google, Google, Apple, like both of oh, them. True. Just like put all the money in those places. Pieces, places. places. Yeah, but if Bitcoin has like, even if you if what if you put like ten bucks in Bitcoin back when it was invented oh, or whatever, true, like true, you true. buy that you, like ten dollar, I think you'd be like a million. I don't really know enough oh, about it. I'm just point. thinking of things that have made oh, people good like, billion years in our life, and then you don't need a lot of money already yeah, yeah, yeah. to like. You could like to literally break it. open your piggy bank and somehow Invest go that ten get bucks, yeah, Bitcoin with that ten dollars and be set. Yeah, true, 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 true. Speaking of going back in time, I have a story from a few weeks ago. Do you remember um, listener of the podcast, Dawn? And she told us several ghosty experiences involving a creepy attic shadow person, mm -hmm. uh, a dairy man ghost, uh, old man ghost Bob who like hid stuff in the house. Yes. Well... She messaged me the other day and gave me a recommendation of a haunted location that you and I should go check out in Washington. Oh. It's this place called Camp One in Kapowson. Have you heard of Kapowson? I don't even fucking know where mountain time is. How am I? Like, <laughs> it's on the mountains, I think. <laughs> the biggest mountains in the country. I don't even know where that. Kapowson? Um, I like the name I of it. I am not super familiar with this area of Washington. I think it's... um. It's not, it's kind of a r more rural uh, location of Washington. Rural. So, how rural. do you spell Kapowson? Kapow. K A P O W S I N. The fuck? Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. I know the general area. That isn't actually too, too far from us. Puyallup and whatnot. That's not, that's not all. Oh, that so far. We, we possibly could go here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so she tells of um, an experience that her boyfriend's brother had while driving his car out there. And he was driving and accidentally hit someone on a motorcycle. <gasps> and so he pulled over in a panic, got out of the car thinking that the worst. And when he got to the spot where he hit the person, nobody was there. <gasps> One time her boyfriend was out there with some friends and they heard a woman screaming in the woods. So they ran out there to see if she was okay and couldn't find anybody <gasps> out there. So then I wanted to research to see if there, uh, if anyone else had had any experiences out here. And I came across several people who mentioned a place called Clay City. Have you heard of Clay City? It's, no, not, um, no. it's out in that area. It's about 15, it's about a 15 minute drive from camp one and it's an abandoned ghost town. Um, and I found, um, one, uh, it's, it's more of a blog post than an article from captain and Clark.com. And they say Clay City was supposed to be a lumber town outside of Kapowson over 100 years ago. As luck would have it, though, the settlers built the city on a huge concentration of clay. It turned out to be more cost effective to make bricks than to mill lumber. Clay City became a booming little town until, and here's where the story differs, a great tragedy struck. One story says that a woman who lived near Clay City was killed unjustly. With her dying breath, she cursed the town and everything except her home burned to the ground. The other version has it that the Kapowson tribe, after being pushed from the land by the Clay City settlers, breathed a desperation into the earth. They wove it so deep that nothing would grow and no children would be born there. Everything would wither and turn to ash in the area. One woman, a member of the Kapowson tribe, remained. 
After Clay City started to falter in the Great Depression, people began to abandon it in a mass exodus. The few people who remained suffered great hardship in the brick factory. The people who stayed blamed the native woman. One night, a group of men went to burn her house down, but the fire spread to the rest of the city and left her house unscathed. The fire raised everything to the ground that wasn't made of local clay. Today, only the small shell of the woman's home remains. <gasps> so um, these people, uh, Clark, Captain and Clark, uh, went on sort of a ghost expedition out to Clay City. And the uh, area where this small home remains is um, private property. So they weren't able to actually go and Darn look it. at the house, but they stood at the woods edge and said that they had heard um, sort of like motors running, almost like two stroke engines. And they, they claimed that it sounded almost like some ATVs driving around in the woods. And, uh, but interesting enough, one of the other stories that I'd read about the area, a girl uh, tells a story that, um, supposedly two men were driving around on their ATVs and accidentally drove off a cliff, both dying. And that several people hear this ATV noise or two stroke engine sound driving around the woods in the area. Some people say that it actually sounds a little like an animal growling too. Regardless, everyone agrees that the sound doesn't stay in one place and like it's moving around the woods out there. So yeah, Clay City, cool. Kapowson. A Skeletal's camping trip. I think we could do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, we actually and so can- Dawn says that we have to bring her with her. With okay, us. So, that sounds great. Yeah. Skeletal's we- camping trip in the future. We camped not too far from there, I think, on our little um, Mount St. Helens voyage. Um, Did you hear screaming, animals growling, or ATVs? No, and no. None of the above. So it wasn't it wasn't right there. It wasn't like but it was down in those areas. I'm just saying it wasn't too far away. Um speaking of animals screaming though, did I ever tell you that remember how when I got back in town and I was taking apart my dishwasher and it was late and I heard that yes. noise? I think you thought I found, it was what? Oh you thought it would might have possibly been an owl, right? I thought it was, but now I think I have figured out the mystery, and I do believe it's coyotes. Dun dun dun! Oh, wah, wah, wah. No ghost. I um, they are out and on the prowl and packs it like we've got a coyote problem right now in this neighborhood. And I thought I knew what a coyote sounded like. They are very, they're like masters of disguise, or maybe we got a, a pack of skinwalkers, but they sound like different all the time. I can't. Did I tell you that I woke up one morning to the sound of a neighbor screaming, a lady <gasps> screaming, bloody no. murder? Like it was seven a.m. Oh, no, screaming, shrieking at the top of her lungs, and it took a moment because I was like dead asleep to be like, did I just hear that? And then my brain just have to adjust to hearing the noise of a woman screaming, like <laughs> like blood curdling scream. I'm like, oh my god, no, someone totally is screaming. Holy shit! Like, and I get up. And then I realize it's followed by, oh, oh, oh. And it was a fucking coyote, like screaming like a lady. It wasn't. (laughs) And I did joke that I hadn't seen my next door neighbor in a while. Her husband's saying she's out of town. But no, she's still there, Katie. Uh, She's around. (laughs) That was my true crime brain getting away from me there. But no, they like are. They make all these crazy noises. It's intense. Yeah, they don't howl like wolves. Yeah. It's chat it, it's kind of chattery too is it's all do, different types uh, like, I guess. Yippee, yippee, yippee. they also apparently scream like women and i think they also can do what I, whoo, like i think it was like a train whistle you sound is what i heard that one night oh. masters of disguise they throw their vice they're sneaky they shit in our yard they are out there packs of is coyotes. your cat okay my cat oh, no. is okay oh no my cat is okay. Okay. The other 23 missing gray ones in the neighborhood. Ruh-roh. Fingers crossed they show back up. It's been bad. It's been like a rash. It's been real bad and it's really sad. 23 shit. I don't know if it's 20. It's been a lot. 
a lot of fluffy white gray cats are missing and it's not it's not cats it's not cats that are meant to be outdoors they like get out they escape somehow those are the honestly those are the ones that die right away because they don't know how to live in the wild (laughs) it's it's the way <laughs> you should hop on with that next door and give some words of encouragement. <laughs> I'll be to the these curmudgeon old people. neighbor. <laughs> those are the ones that get oh, real quick. They're, they're, they don't know right. how to survive, though. It's the scrappy outdoor ones that are like they know the spots to not get eaten. Yeah, and bright white gray cats in our hood do not do well. Like uh, our cat is a torty. She's brown and black, and she's like camo. She doesn't even have any teeth, and she's fucking surviving out there. <laughs> living her best life on that n- fun note what yeah. were we talking about uh <laughs> camping cats. camping yeah. and noises in the woods what could uh, we'd have to come up with some good like we could do like a a blair witch hunt that would be fun i don't know like i'm oh trying to God. think of camping can activities. you even imagine the camp stories that with john and the experience that i wouldn't i don't think i would be sleeping that whole night but mm-hmm. it would be a good time. It would be pretty fun. I I mean, could you do a Ouija board in the woods? Like, I think that's it. I'm like, how would you do some <laughs> sort of like experiment like that? Like, I guess you could. But um, uh, well, you you'd bring your recorder, the uh, some EMF reader, the beep, 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 whatever that guy is. Yeah. You know, and your spirit the tools. box. You could do a few mm-hmm. things. Yeah. The chatterbox. I, I don't need. Yeah. Your chatterbox. I don't. <laughs> I don't need a lot to be freaked out. I don't like going to the bathroom in the middle of the night. When oh, I'm in the woods. I know. Yeah. I know. That's my least favorite part is having to pee in the middle of the night. We just do a family group pee every year. That's kind of been our thing now. We'll just all get up in the middle of the night. <laughs> go pee together. Go pee together. Everyone's up anyway. Um, but the time that we went up to, we crashed a camping party up in Nebraska with you they weren't even your friends. They were somebody else's <laughs> friends that invited you. And then you invited me. And we completely outnumbered so these people, people. Yeah. that had originally invited us who were like, who the fuck are all these people that are here? And we were not a quiet bunch. We were rowdy and fighty and loud. And the person who started the camping trip was a very timid. I'm going to call her a Whole Foods person where it was just like organic oat bars for everyone to snack on and we here we brought like all the alcohol in the state of Colorado and marshmallows and they were just sitting around a campfire reading like food magazines that was their whole (laughs) camping trip and but on that trip remember we saw that abandoned um the abandoned playground that was like stupid yeah. freaky and then at night there was a full moon and rising mist on the horizon <gasps> and i was like there are zombies they're coming for us i i like my brain could picture like the ghosts and the zombies rising up from this mist an army of them coming to attack us and this is me an adult person completely sober cuz i was pregnant at the time having these delu- like i was so scared i was so genuinely this scared is wh- it you know me maybe out. this is why i drink so much on camping trips is Ugh. it's like dull the fear maybe dull- I, was- I didn't i didn't remember that zombie fog any yeah. moment army of the dead was going to come up over that hill and eat us all i oh, yeah it's going to be wonderful it's going to be great. That is why we drink. Isn't that a podcast? Damn it. That's a good name. Dicks. <laughs> Something like if that. If you have a good camping story or time travel story or UFO story, <laughs> please. you can write it into our uh, our hot box. At skeletalspodcast at gmail.com. You can also call us on our hotline. 302-689-DEAD, 302-689-3323. We are on all the social medias, um, and you can me- message us over there if you want to share your story that way. And, uh, oh, 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 very oh. <laughs> nice. Oh. We had a listener buy us a bottle of wine for our 100th episode. And if you, dear listeners, wanted to buy us some booze for the live recording next week, you can do that over at our merch shop. 
skeletalspodcast.etsy.com or you can um, send some funds for the booze to our Venmo, which is Skeletales Dash Podcast. And we will accept that and cheers to you. And it's going to be fun. Heck yeah. I like how we're like, we got to start making some money on this podcast. We're going to like hire an editor to free up some time for me. (laughs) No, we are just blowing it all. Blowing it all on a fancy (laughs) night at a haunted hotel, (laughs) some booze and a party. (laughs) That's how we roll, Alyssa. That's how we roll. Doing it right. So you know it's going to a good cause is the bottom line. Hey, tell a friend. Tell a friend to tell a friend, write a review, like, share, do all the things. Every person you tell helps us um, with our podcast endeavors. I don't spread the word of Skeletales. Yeah. All of those things. Please. Yes, please. Because this is our 99th episode. If you don't do these things, we won't have a hundredth. (gasps) We're going to hold you hostage. And then we will haunt y'all later. Haunt you later. Good night. Good night.